Loctite is a very slight kind of a glue, uh, and it grips uh, the nut once you've tightened it and keeps it in place. It's exactly what opticians use on the little screws in glasses to keep the screw in place. Uh, it's a really useful thing to have around if you're a guitar player, go out and buy some. So pull off the volume knob, uh, apply the Loctite, do up the nut as tight as you can, and you're good to go. By the way, if you turn the volume pot and it keeps turning, it's loose on the inside as well, uh, don't tighten it from the front. Take the back plate off, hold the mechanism still and then tighten it from the front. Otherwise you're in danger of turning the whole mechanism and the wires will pop off and that's bad news. The same goes for the input. If you're going to tighten your input, then undo the screws, take out the, the whole input part, hold it still and then screw it up and put the Loctite on and screw it back in place. Because otherwise the inside will turn around, spin, and the wires will pop off the input and that's a nightmare as well. Get your soldering iron out and you've got a world of pain. Which leads us to pickups. Um, now I've got a soldering iron, I can solder pickups in place just like everyone else can do. Uh, if you get the pickup and you get the little diagram and the soldering iron and it's good and the diagram and the iron and the good. But here's the thing. I much prefer going to a luthier and having him wire them in for me so that all I have to concentrate on is how does it sound once it's wired in. I went to Neil Perry at Raw State. He's a legend of a guy who worked on the wiring for the ML1. Um, if you live in Wiltshire or anywhere near Avon, go and see him. He's a legend. Uh, you can find his contact details on the Chapman Guitars website, chapmanguitars.co.uk. And the best thing was, he didn't just wire them in. He wired them in and said, try that. And I tried it. And then he said, let's wire it a different way. Out of phase, in a phase, activates this, this does that, let's change it all around. And there are so many ways you can wire pickups, especially humbuckers. Mm -hmm. Um, that you can get a plethora of tones um, with just the wiring. The wiring is like another kind of a pickup, it just changes the way things sound. So don't be content to just wire in pickups on your own, spend an hour and a half and go, oh, that's hard work, that'll do. Take it to someone else, have them wire it different ways and listen to how it sounds. That's musical, that's what you want to be doing. Concentrate on the tonality of your pickups and the way they work for you. Talking of pickups, why don't I show you how the stock Chinese cheap pickup sound on a variety of my Chapman guitars through the 85th combo and the 1960s 412. So lo and behold, this is uh, prototype number one, the one of 500. Uh, in fact, actually, um, it may even be zero of 500, I'm not really sure. Uh, Boiler Doom! <laughs> Uh, this is a great guitar, I made a bunch of improvements upon this to give you what you've currently got now. However, the humbucker in the bridge is exactly the same as the one you've got. It's the stock humbucker and I love the sound of this pickup. Um, it screams. It's got a lot of uh, mid, high end, high power tone. Um, it isn't really a metal pickup, it's a heavy rock pickup, that's how I describe it. <laughs> So if I set this 85th for a scooped kind of metal tone, you see what I mean? It doesn't quite cut it with metal, but it does the job. Check this out. Scoop button, deep button, all the gain, touch more volume, scoop the mid, add the top, almost all the presence, uh, a little bit less bass. same humbucker using a very slight crunch on the clean channel of the amplifier. Here is the very first production model ML1 straight out of the factory, out of the box, into my hands. Uh, I literally set it up, strung it, whacked the bar in, and this is what you buy. When you buy an M01, this is what you get. I love it to pieces. I'm really proud to have this guitar line. And um, this is going to show you what the pickups sound like uh, in some of the in-between sounds. So if I coil tap that humbucker, this is the kind of tonality you get with that very slight crunch going on. <laughs> If you 
coil tap the humbucker, what happens is you activate the back or the bridge side uh, coil. So you get a really high trebly Telecaster type tone uh, that I just love. Um, and I'm a big Telecaster fan, that's why I chose to have it do that. So check this out. If I back off the volume a little bit, this is the tapped humbucker. <laughs> contrasts with the coil tapped central position. Basically wherever you stick the switch, if you've coil tapped it, the humbuckers just split. In the central position, all three pickups are activated. Check this out. position you'll hear a change. Uh, it's a very slight change but basically you get the neck pickup and you get a little bit of the middle pickup. tones from this guitar are the bridge humbucker on its own, the coil tap bridge bucker and the central position tapped or either. Um, I love that kind of clarity you get from the bridge side single coil with all the pickups engaged. You get that kind of tubey warm crunch but you get that sort of top end clear sparkle from the uh, tapped bucker. Sounds great. I hope this was useful for you. Um, I really hope if you've got an MO1 you go out and you make it your own. That's the philosophy of Chapman guitars. I shouldn't ever tell you what to play, how to play it, how to have it set up, what's best for you. You decide yourself. It's your tone, it's your musical journey, you have to do it yourself. So if any of you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop me an email to info at chapmanguitars.co.uk. It might take me a week to get back to you, but I promise you I'll always get back to you. Well, I've been Rob Chappers from Chapman Guitars. You guys take it easy, Chappers out.